else or what's your story? Uh, I grew up in Michigan and uh, came out here in 2008 for law school, uh, which was uh, a lot of skiing uh, with some law on the side. Okay, right on. Um, I'm from Wisconsin, so it's funny, like there's so many Midwest people out here and uh, it doesn't surprise me that you're from the Midwest, man. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you, you grew up uh, skiing on 600-foot ice hills. Uh, you you want to go play in the big playground. So all of us uh, Great Lakes guys 100%. Uh, wanted to be out here. Yeah. So, get... so did you grow up running or did you grow up with any sort of mountain background at all? I mean, I know there's no mountains in Michigan. Uh, no, I, I uh, played soccer and tennis as a kid and then I uh, came out here in 08, uh, did my first 14er in 2009 which was uh holy cross i was in skate shoes and a t-shirt no water uh didn't really know what i was getting myself into uh me and my sister's friend at the time got to the top pretty quick and uh we we're like well that was kind of easy let's just go this way so we went down the cross kuyar uh which is completely dry and um it took us till about 11 o'clock to go find his car um <laughs> get out of there and I had a headache for like three days and said never again and and kind of the rest is is history I'm almost at 514 or summits uh 13 years later so 514 or summits so have you done all the 14ers in Colorado yep uh I did on the I finished the first time I think in 2015 uh in 2016 did all of them and the Centennials without a car. So biking between the, the ranges, 2,100 wow. miles in 70 days. Whoa. Um, 30 miles a day, 29.5 miles a day. Dang. Okay. Oh. Let me, let me pause you right there. Um, I, I, we can't skip over that. So I, I didn't, I, and I don't know if I caught all that. You said all the 14ers and the Centennials and you biked in between them all. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did, so uh, self-supported journey uh i was supported uh so i had friends driving in and out um uh but most of the peaks i did by myself um okay. but 2100 mile loop uh starting at culebra ending at long's peak um hadn't been done before um and that was exciting to me to to do something that no one had done before for sure and what year was that that was 16 Okay. So my memory is rusty, but hasn't Andrew Hamilton done that at one point? And I'm thinking like Justin Simone, did he do something like that at one point too? Justin did it the year after me, uh, unsupported. Okay. Okay. And, Got it. Uh, and way faster. <laughs> and faster. Uh, okay. And Andrew uh, had done the 14ers, but not the Centennials. Uh, uh, okay. And I think two years ago, Andrew did the Centennials with a car. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I get all the details mixed up, but so you kind of established the route for Justin, is, is that right? Or did, did he follow any of your notes or what did that look like? Uh, I, I think he picked and chose. Uh, I think he saw things that made sense and he saw things that, that didn't make sense that I did. Sure. Uh, and so, you know, got to, got to make it more perfect, so wow. to speak. Okay. All right. So, I mean, that's a huge adventure that had to have been a life changer, a game changer. I mean, what, what did you say? 70 days? Yeah. You know, 70 days, like maybe five, five showers, solar showers. That was pretty <laughs> I remember in the phase and putting up the solar shower and uh, I'm buck naked and uh, cresting over the hill. There's, you know, no one there. And then suddenly a car comes over the hill and it's uh, this, this old man and this old lady. And, uh, I was pretty tired and pretty naked. So uh, that just happened. They just <laughs> by and I just gave them a wave. <laughs> and they're still probably telling people about that story. Yeah, I'm sure they're like, people in Colorado are just strange. There's this man taking a shower under a tree. <laughs> uh, so, okay. Um, in Michigan, were you doing any cycling at all? Or was cycling kind of a new thing for you as well? Uh, yeah, I cycle a little bit. My, my uncles, uh, they all kind of do century rides in, in Northern Michigan. Yep. Uh, we have a lake house between 
on Burt Lake, but between Burt Lake and Mullet Lake. Uh, and so you just kind of go ride uh, into Harbor Springs, then on the um, the Trail of Trees up along uh, M119 on the on the coast of Lake Michigan. Um, so you can get some pretty nice 100 mile rides. Okay. Uh, I do a lot of running there. So I'll wake up at like four in the morning, and go run to Lake Michigan, 24 mile run, or I'll wake up and run to Lake Huron, like 28 mile run the other way. So you did have some running experience. Um, that's more like as an adult, when I, when I go on vacation, I like to, uh, be very strange compared to my, my Michigan relatives. <laughs> okay. Um, and I looked up or I tried to look up your ultra sign up and if I found the correct person, it doesn't look like you have a whole lot of ultras under your belt. Am I, I don't know. And I don't know if it's the right Robert Barlow, or I think it's under Rob Barlow. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've done maybe, uh, I think I've finished two hundreds. Okay. Okay. So, uh, pursuing ultra marathons wasn't a big thing in your mind or, um, are you just sort of new to the sport or what does this look like for you? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I did the thing in 2016 and then from there kind of started, uh, trying to do hundreds. So in 17, I did run rabbit, quit at like mile 72, uh, next year finished it. The next year did, um, cold water rumble, which was pretty comical. I didn't realize it was wintertime. Uh, and one of the, you know, one of the things about mountains is uh, daylight. Right. And so. I'd always applied that lesson in mountains, understanding that the days are shorter, but didn't apply that into running. And so I didn't realize how long I'd be in the dark in a ultra in January. Um, so I got to like mile 82 and it was just dark out. And I was just like, ah, I'm kind of done here, um, which was a comical quit, but a good, a good lesson learned. Uh, and then did silver heels in 2019. And that went, uh, that went pretty well. It kind of went according to plan. Nice. Okay. I got second place in that one so nice right on okay um i think i was out there that year actually i don't think i was running but i think i was there nice well that's cool man so but it sounds like uh, um mountain projects are more your speed rather than running ultras i mean if you've only got a few hundreds under your belt but 500 summits it sounds like you just like to spend your time in the mountains probably by yourself most of the time i'm guessing uh you know, I, I got a pretty good crew of friends, but yeah, I mean, I spend a, maybe 30% by myself, 70% with, with folks, but yeah, not huge groups. Oh. Definitely okay. more, more of a mountain guy than a sanctioned runner guy. I think that's kind of why I really like the idea of Dolan's. For sure. Yeah. So when you did the Centennials, were you aware of Nolan's 14 and were you tr like using that route between those peaks in the Swatch range or what, what was that like back then? Um, you, you know, I, I didn't really know about Nolan's. I, Andrew Hamilton did give me some help with my route in 2016. And one of the things he, he said uh, that kind of piqued my interest about Nolan's was, Oh yeah. And then after you do this whole, you know, centennial thing, you're going to be set up great to do Nolan's. And so of course, like that night I go and like, look up Nolan's and like, what is this thing? And so that was kind of in the back of my head, uh, when I finished the centennials in 2016, um, that I wanted to go do that. So I spent the next six years trying to figure it out. Okay. And so that was the first you'd heard of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Um, and did you, like most of us take a look at Nolan's and say, okay, this is going to be really freaking hard, but, uh, you know, I should be able to do it. I've, I've done some ultras. I've done some hard things in the mountains. Like I've made several attempts and never successfully done it. And it sounds like your journey spans over a few years as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think my attitude going into it was, let's kind of let's kind of see what happens. Um, you know, in, in six years, I think I put 158 summits of just those 14 peaks together and, uh, I did four attempts. So the, you know, the first go at it, uh, only got four peaks. Um, it's kind of a debacle of sorts. Um, didn't think I'd be out there in the dark, thought I would get to avalanche before it got dark out. Uh, and so I was going down Maxwell Gulch, pretty much in the dark with a cell phone in one hand. Um, 
and then using moonlight along the Colorado Trail to get to the Avalanche Gulch. So that was a disaster. Um, I've and, done all of those things. I can relate. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I was just kind of laughing at myself. <laughs> you, you think you haven't figured out, but you just don't. Uh, and so uh, I get to my friends and they're like, oh man, you can keep going. And in the back of my head, I know if I go up over Yale, uh, you're not really getting support until here on. Um, so you're, you're jumping from four peaks to 11 peaks. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went up, uh, up the East Ridge a little bit, suddenly laid down, fell asleep, hour went by, kind of knew that my time was passing, given how slow I was going, turned around and back and uh, slept in my friend Tony's car and call, called that a go. It's funny. Uh, I've done that exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So that was uh, your first attempt? That was attempt one. Okay. Um, the next year, uh, I would say, so 2020, I got really fit, felt like I had a really good handle, um, on Nolan's, um, did a couple five peak days, uh, you know, going, going Yale all the way to Belford. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was like, oh, I feel like I can definitely do this. You know, these five peak days aren't really doing much to me anymore. Um, and so felt really confident going into it, um, had a really good crew, which is, I think, crucial. And we'll get into that when we get to the fourth one. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, didn't I'm just not a good planner. Uh, and so I was kind of relying on uh, then athleticism that time. And um, didn't really have all the food I needed. Got a lot of help from my friend Hannes Gearing, uh, who mm. has also finished Nolan's. Yep, I've had him on. Yeah, great guy. And uh, he, he gave me all of his food on top of Harvard so that I could basically keep going. And then he had to hike out without food. So, you know, that's some of the stuff that crew people do, particularly for bad planners like me. Yes. Uh, so, so uh, you know, made it all the way over Elbert's. And, um, well, on La Plata, I, I made a route finding error. I went down to the bottom of La Plata Blaze and... Uh, so basically, I got sick of staying on the ridge line. Uh, everything looked the same. And on day three or, or night two of Nolan's, you're just pretty exhausted. And so I uh, got frustrated and was just like, hey, let's just go to the bottom of the basin. Unfortunately, there's no trail there and there's willows that are like 10 feet tall. Yeah. Uh, so we spent a couple hours down there, hiked back up to the trail and hiked, hiked out. So I lost two hours there. Uh, took a nap on Colorado 82, shivering, uh, just no plan, no realization that I could have uh, utilized uh, like a warm car or something like that uh, to kind of refresh myself. Uh, so shivered on the side of Colorado 82 and then made the fatal mistake of going up Hayden Gulch, which is the gulch to the west of Echo Canyon, uh, oh. which, that I had to go over an extra mountain just to get to... Uh, Bull Hill to get to Albert, and that wasted like four extra hours. Uh, okay. So, so how many peaks was that? I was thirteen. Um, made it thirteen. Okay. Over over uh, over Albert, and where one ten J meets one ten on the back side of on the south side of Massive. Oh, uh, yep. Fifty three and a half hours uh, was where I was at. Kind of knew that with how uh, beat up I was, there's just no way I was going to no make way. it. For sure. Uh, called it there. What was that like? Was that a huge disappointment or like, how do you mentally deal with stuff with a setback like that? I mean, that's, you got pretty damn close, man. I was pretty devastated and, and mostly really mad at myself. Right. Um, you know, the, the route finding errors at the end were, were pretty fatal. Um, you know, without them, I think I might've, might've been able to eke it out. Mm -hmm. Um, so three weeks later, I made my third attempt, unsupported, uh, which we would say is not not brilliant, uh, <laughs> but shows how stubborn I am. Well, yeah, and if your your uh, that attempt was anything like mine, I've done the same thing. It's like okay, in three weeks I'm gonna be recovered, right? It's gonna be just fine, and then you go out there and it just doesn't work out that way. <laughs> yeah, no, I, you know your body your mind tricks itself into thinking that your body's recovered. Yes. Uh, so uh, I did 10 peaks unsupported. Uh, so got to Missouri 
uh, and actually ran into one of my crew from this this go, the fourth one, uh, named Nick Medica. Nick's uh, uh, a really good athlete. He's going to do Nolan's next one. Nice. Uh, super stoked for him. Uh, and he, on his first try ever, got 10 peaks. So uh, we bo both called it quits on Missouri together, uh, which was which is a fun bonding moment as we both basically <laughs> crawled to Missouri Gulf Trailhead. Yeah, yeah. So all of your attempts, it sounds like, have been south to north. Yep, yep. Um, wh like, wh well, I understand that. I understand the logic behind that for the most part, I think. Um, the, the biggest thing is probably getting Princeton done on day one rather than, you know, day two or three, but, um, like, why did you never take a crack at it from North to South? Like what, what are your thoughts there? I think it's helpful knowing the splits, right? You kind of know, you know, your first five, six splits. And so you have a good sense of whether you think you're going to make it, whether you're going to have enough juice to go, go to day three. Um, and and just the body is so different every day. So some sometimes, uh, you know, most of the times I get up Shabano around one fifty. Uh, but if it's like two twenty, um, then I then I know I don't really know that I want to make a huge Nolan's push. Um, is, that, so, is that a midnight start or what time are you starting? I started at three fifth or three forty one this time. Um, okay. The idea was three forty, so that. Uh, I'd be about on top of Shavno at sunrise because sunrise was uh, scheduled for 540 okay. uh, for Google. Um, and it ended up being 541 because when we started my uh, Garmin at 339, uh, it, it wouldn't ping to my phone. And so it didn't ping until the middle of 340. So we waited a full minute until 341 to start <laughs> but I want to make sure everything is like you know uh done done right so. for sure and you're probably sitting there stressing out for a, a solid minute or two going why god <laughs> i just want to move yeah, yeah I, I had a spot x on my second and third attempt and the the second time i was hitting the tracking button and it wouldn't start so i like finally uh gave it to to my friend carly and she she made it work, which was good. Okay. okay. I was so stressed out. I couldn't even make the tracker work. So <laughs> i dolt. So. Right. Right. All right, man. So, so this has been like six, six years you've been working on this thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I started looking at it in, in 2016 and, uh, finally finished it in 2022. So. And this was your fourth attempt. Mm-hmm. Fourth attempt. Okay. And you made it 13 peaks one time. I mean, that's pretty impressive. So, I mean, you've probably got this route pretty well dialed. I, I, are you using any sort of a GPS or GPX out there? Or is at this point, is it pretty much all just memory? It's memory. I, I mean, I'm, I'm more of a old, uh, old school, uh, type. So, mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it causes problems because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for instance, off Maxwell Gulch, I made a mistake coming down. I lost probably about an hour. Um, I know that the spots uh, in these, um, this Aspen Grove where you make a left and you go slightly over a ridge and then you drop onto some nice animal trails that really lead you right onto the Colorado Trail. Uh, and I just turned a little too high and spent a pretty long time trying to figure out how to get back down to the Colorado Trail. Um, and so I've scouted that maybe six times and like four of them, it's worked out perfectly and two of them it hasn't. And this is unfortunately one of the two times it didn't work out great. So <laughs> uh, I, I lost, uh, you know, I was in a, a lightning storm on Princeton. So I had to actually just jump down the side of, of Princeton. So instead of backtracking to the upper part of Maxwell Gulch or, or going um, kind of, along the ridge that separates Maxwell and Dry Gulch uh, and then dropping into Maxwell. I, I just kind of dropped off the side to no longer be a lightning leader. My hand was buzzing. Um, so I lost a little, little time there, lost some time. Uh, on Yale, I was having some breathing tr troubles. So I, instead of waiting for airplane gully, I dropped a gully uh, early and then tried to traverse into airplane gully. Those are my big route finding errors this time. And, uh. Uh, 
my friend had to wait for me, uh, Nick had to wait for me uh, about four hours on, uh, on Oxford because of those mistakes, they all kind of added up. Uh, it's funny, man. I think I've made both of those mistakes and most people who are familiar with Nolan's probably have. I want to stop you and back you up a little bit. Which, which route did you go up Princeton? Uh, so I went from the Alpine Cemetery. Yes. Uh, and just took the nice little trail there. Yep. Um, and then instead of, uh, I've kind of made the mistake of going too high in that gulch and then trying to follow uh, like gra- the section where there's like boulders and there's grass up against each other. Um, I've made the mistake of going there too many times and just get in like wallowing in how steep it is. I'm just not a very strong climber. Uh, yep. Uh, or uphill, or we'll call it. That's not really climbing. Um, so I kind of backtracked. Um, you know, once you're above, um, blanking on the, uh, a gr- once you're above like the initial part of grouse, I kind of backtracked towards that and got on the ridge as early as possible. Got on the ridge. Okay. Took- <laughs> okay. How is that route? I've never gone up that ridge right there. Uh, it looks, it probably looks like if you looked at the tracker more like an S is probably what I did, um, just to keep the steepness lower. Oh. It's, it's nice. I, I've, I've played on that ridge before. Okay. Probably class three. Even. Okay. I've heard a couple people talking about that more recently. And most of the time I went up that way, I went up something that we were calling Blake's fast scree gully. And it's just, it's just like a super steep scree gully and you put one foot in and you sink down and then it's just constantly one foot in, you sink down like three feet and it's so frustrating. That's, that's the thing that I've gotten stuck on multiple times and like just trying to find a different way around that. Uh, Uh, It was hence the, the nice little S that I did, which worked out pretty well. Okay. Okay. I feel like I got stuck there this time. Nice. And you had a lightning storm while you were on top of Princeton? Yeah, we... Um, God, I, every time I'm, I'm on Princeton, that it's storming up there, man. <laughs> it's just so prominent. Um, you know, there's just such a long run out to the north to Yale, and there's a long run out to the south to Antero, so it just, I think, is a pretty good lightning leader itself in that mm-hmm. it's so separated from the rest of them. You know, Antero has White and, and Tab and Chavano and Cyclone and Jones and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a much bigger massive over there than Princeton is just kind of by itself. And I think it just attracts the storms. Yeah, yeah. Um, so did you feel like you were in danger up there? Um, I've been in a lot of, of storms that so wasn't like the – worst storm ever um i took a video of myself making my hand a lightning leader um but also knew i shouldn't be playing on a ridge line uh, unless i'm on <laughs> Chris. yeah so uh, dropped off pretty quickly after making that video okay and you were going for maxwell gulch and it sounded like that wasn't quite perfect and usually when it's not quite perfect you end up having to bushwhack a lot and when you make it down to the colorado trail you're just like usually soaked cut up and just thankful you finally found the trail is that was that how it was for you i, I think you, you hit the nail on the head yeah <laughs> i mean you're, you, you got a lot of those sticks that are just kind of sticking up through a, a lot of leaves and hard to see and you're moving pretty fast and so yeah that, it was pretty covered in dirt uh i wore white shoes which was funny uh, cause those were no longer very white and I uh, had a lot of cuts, um, which is funny cause I, the first three, I, I got through very clean and usually tab watch. I'm always, I've always rolled an ankle or cut something going down, uh, the backside of, of, uh, tab watch towards Brown Gulch. But, uh, this time, th- the first time I really got beat up was on, uh, was on Princeton. Yeah. What time of day was that for you? Uh, I think I'd summon it around, i look this up. Um, I want to say like one in the afternoon. Nice. One, 140. Okay. So you were cruising and then it was still light out when you made it down to the Colorado Trail. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, I uh, the, the sun was setting um, as I was maybe a thousand feet from Yale, from the top of Yale. Nice. Okay. 
Um, and then uh, which way did you go up, Yale? Uh, I took a ridge called Spike Ridge. Um, yes. Okay. So you look for, uh, you go up the East Ridge route and there's a tree that looks literally like a spike. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point you leave the trail and angle. Take yep. Take a left and go bushwhacking uh, and try to uphill it as much as you can. And eventually you're on this hill that diagonals. So you cut off about uh, a mile of the East Ridge and then two miles um, this way as well. So it's, you're taking the hypotenuse of a, of a triangle. Mm. Okay. And about that, uh, Andrew Hamilton and Andrea Sansone and I uh, uh, got to scout together. It was um, shown to me by Andrew and Andrea and um, had a great time finding it with them in 2020. And uh, it was nice enough to, for me to be there in daytime uh, to see the tree and, and really find the route. Um, you know, other times or other attempts, it's been dark when I've gotten there. And so I just try to keep it simple and stay on the East Ridge. Um, but being there in daylight, I knew I could, uh, could cheat and go the hypotenuse instead of uh, taking two sides of a triangle. Mm, yep. I've got to ask, um, I've spoken with Andrew and Andrea collectively for hours, but I've never really hiked with them. So I've got to ask what that's like. Um, you know, Andrew is like the king of Nolans and, uh, but I know he doesn't really claim to be a runner. He's more of a hiker. Did you pick up any tips or tricks or anything from them? It sounds like you did some route finding, but anything else you picked up with them? Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of it for me has been, has been route finding, you know, a Andrew is like an encyclopedia of mountains. Yeah. Um, and they've always just been really, uh, uh, great people to me, always so kind and, uh, been really lucky to, to learn a lot from them. Um, but the biggest thing has certainly been like routes, uh, mm -hmm. is what I've, what I've learned from them. Okay. how did you meet them? Met them in 11 or 12 on Lindsay. Oh, really? Uh, and then uh, re reconnected with them through a friend of mine, Adrian Green, who's uh, friends with Andrew's um, family. So. Okay. Okay. Small world. Yeah. Well, those are good people to know with uh, the objectives you're after. So that's, that's cool. Um, and then descending Yale didn't go perfectly. Um, you said you were going for the airplane gully, but went one gully early. Is that what you said? Yeah. Um, so I've done airplane gully a bunch of times. Uh, and, and so you kind of traverse on the, the side of this little bump to get to airplane. It's the second gully. Mm -hmm. uh, my lungs, uh, get a little iffy i've got asthma and so sometimes i just have to get down quicker mm. and i fill up with fluid and i start coughing a lot and can't breathe in well so i, I tried to just skip down quicker which was a pretty big mistake um because then i was just kind of traversing cliffs and mm. ended up taking a nice fall lost my phone uh so that was entertaining uh and unfortunate Lost uh, it for the rest of the trip. Well, uh, that that phone is up there, so oh, you know, that sucks. <laughs> uh, There's a few phones up there, man. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, no, I, I might, I might myself go go look for it and sell it back. <laughs> so. Well, so okay, so if you didn't have your phone, did that? Um, were you relying on that for navigation or anything, or what was that like? No, no, I, I mean the phone. I was just posting. Uh, uh, you know, summit photos or, uh, on Instagram Updates and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't, it's not a navigational tool for me. So. For sure. Okay. So you fell and it fell out of your pocket and you couldn't find it or what happened? Yeah, I had it, uh, I had a running vest on and it was just in the, one of the drink pockets and I didn't, uh, tighten it before I put it in there. And so I took a face forward tumble and it fell out and, <laughs> Okay. Thanks. So <laughs> wasn't willing to go look for it. Okay. 
Um, I believe I've been down that gully down Yale as well, that first gully, and uh, it's not very pleasant. So, yeah, you probably lost a little bit of time there, I'm guessing. Yeah, and, and particularly because I kept, I, instead of just like trying to like bomb through it, I, I kept side hilling because I am super familiar with airplane gully. So, eventually, I got to airplane gully. Uh, but yeah, I, I had lost more time than I would, would care to to really reminisce about those right close to two hours that I had, I had lost going down there. Okay. Um, so what's going through your mind at that point? Like, are you doubting yourself or are you still just trudging on or what are you thinking? Um, I kind of knew that I had a good first three peaks. I was probably about an hour ahead of my time. Mm. I did, um, the first three, I think at four fifty three. So I was up Antero in four hours and 53 minutes. So I, I felt like I, I had some time to lose. Mm -hmm. um, but sure, I, I mean, I was definitely a bit frustrated about how going down Yale went, but just kind of told myself, keep it simple and, you know, follow the plan, get up Columbia, get on, get on the trail, get up Columbia, and, you know, you'll, you'll make up time later. Yeah, yeah. And on this attempt, did you have crew out there that you were working with or were you communicating with them through walkie talkie or not, not your phone, obviously. <laughs> uh, well, it was my phone. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I had a, a, a crew of five. Um, okay. So uh, Jen Nanny, Chris Siever, Eric Tishner uh, were um, kind of like side, side car crew. Uh, so crewing at, at designated spots. Um, and then I had two pacers for the, for the back half. So uh, Nick Medica, and then uh, he was with me from Oxford to La Plata. And then uh, Eric St. Van Atten, who's just a really good friend of mine, uh, really good just guy. Um, he's always, uh, he's not really a mountain guy. Uh, so it's funny because the other, the other four are, are really big mountain people. And then Erickson is just kind of this, um, not mountain guy uh who just shows up in the mountains for me uh when i ask him to do ridiculous things so he did um the last two peaks with me okay and the last two peaks is nothing to sneeze at that's still a big it's still a big deal especially for somebody that's not really a mountain guy yeah it, yeah and, and and he you know he's to his credit he, he has done um bigger objectives he's, he's done orizaba he's done his the siwaddle uh orizaba's a 18 500 or 18,490 uh, is the sea waddles 17,159. Uh, he's done Kilimanjaro. Um, so, but he, I wouldn't think of him as like a true mountain guy. He's a, he's a, he's a bicyclist is what I think of. Uh, he's okay. a really, and a really good runner. He's a college D one runner. So oh, okay. more of just a pure athlete. For sure. Okay. Okay. So um, I think we're to Columbia. Um, any, uh, any crazy routes or secrets you have on Columbia or was that pretty standard? Um, I mean, there's a few ways to do it. Uh, you know, if I'm there in daytime, I would probably just bomb straight up Columbia, um, straight from airplane gully, um, which yep. is what I've done in, uh, on practice runs. But if it's dark out uh, and you're, you know, not using navigation, uh, kind of follow the keep it, keep it simple, stupid method, the kiss method. So, yep. uh, get on the, the main trail and uh, follow the Columbia Trail at the top. Yep, okay. And uh, I was super lucky there. Uh, that's where Chris Siever and Jen um, were waiting for me on, on Columbia. So we kind of do a, a swap out of food um, on top of there. So changed bags. So I'd have enough stuff overnight in case it got cold. Got it, uh, okay. And speaking of which, what were you using to fuel throughout most of this journey? Yeah, uh, I, spring energy. Um, okay. The three different types of spring energy, the, the wolf pack, which is actually four different types. Uh, the wolf pack, which is like a 350 calorie fruit oatmeal uh, smoothie and a squeeze. Mm. Um, so whenever I feel really low, that's what I use because it bounces back pretty quick. It'll help you avoid a bonk. Um, mm two different types of um, like cocoa berry. Uh, one is the one with caffeine, one is without. Uh, and then the coffee, uh, all of these things, they're really just like 
blended fruit with uh, coconut oil um, and then a little bit of basmati rice um, and maple syrup to make them sweet. Um, so it's all really healthy ingredients. And um, I've always found that, that that stuff really helps me, particularly when I only train with like gas station food. So uh, I, I save the spring energy for when I'm doing a real thing and then train with garbage food typically. Um, and then like, you know, the back end with cardiac creep, um, you know, Cokes, Twinkies, m and M, peanut m ms gummy worms, uh, way more sugary stuff. So sp spring energy early on sugary stuff on the back end. Okay. Okay. Uh, pizza throughout. So pizza uh, throughout. Yeah. Really good about, uh, getting me Domino's pizza. So I, I ate a bunch of pizzas too while I was out there. Nice. Is there a Domino's in Buena Vista? There is. It's in the, the Johnson's Crossing, uh, where uh, 285 comes into to 40 or 24. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. Okay. So we're getting all your secrets here, dude. I love this. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, the pizza in the, uh, in the Ziploc baggies is, is definitely the way to go. Nice. Okay. Um, okay. So Columbia to Harvard. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, do you drop all the way down before you go up into Harvard or how did you get up Harvard? Yeah. Um, you know, past attempts I, I've stayed high, uh, and found that I've lost a lot of time, um, particularly my unsupported one. Uh, I just kind of cliffed myself out and then I had to sleep on a cliff until I could see where I was going. Oh no. So that was, that was a lesson learned. So I, I had it dead set that this time I was only going to go low. Um, and so uh, that's what I did. Um, I kind of got myself onto like a rocky section I've never been on before because I was in the dark. And um, just the dark is just not a strong point of mine either. Uphill is not a strong point of mine. The dark is not a strong point of mine. Uh, so at I think it was four... 22 i just uh i just gave up on the whole uh trying to hike any more thing and uh put a coat down on the ground as a, as a ground pad and used my bag as a as a pillow and laid there until uh i saw the sun mm. uh, so maybe slept maybe didn't um no an I, hour I, or so yeah, yeah i slept for like 63 minutes okay. uh, it was 525 uh when i saw the sun and got going again okay. uh, and I think I was on top of Harvard at 640. Nice. Kind of a simple route out of, out of Frenchman Creek. So, yep. Um, okay. Yeah, rolling grass. So pretty, yeah. pretty up uh, pretty quick. Do you feel like that nap helped you? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I've, I've taken the nap at Pine, Pine Creek before and I felt like that helped me in the, in the second attempt. And I did that in the third attempt too. It was a spot Pine Creek that I really like. There's a, tree where you put your feet up and the mm. other works as a nice little pillow. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so you're halfway done. Um, and, and doing all right for time, really. It sounds like, uh, if you're at Harvard at six 30 in the morning, you're doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I felt good about time. I was maybe a little bit ahead of my, of my 2020 time, the, un the supported time. Um, so I, I thought I was going to get it done for sure. Um, you know, uh, get down to Pine Creek is, is your next goal. Got down there, uh, didn't really mess around much with it. Um, you know, when you're scouting, you're trying to find like a way to get across it dry. It's just not realistic in June. Right. So I bombed straight through it. Okay. And then there's a route, uh, up Oxford that, Andrew and Andrea showed me, mm. uh, so I just took that. That's always been very kind to me and, uh, met Nick on top of Oxford at 10 40, I think. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think the way up Oxford, uh, I've always gone up and I don't remember exactly. It's been a couple of years, but you're, I usually go up and I'm looking for a tree that's been struck by lightning. Do you know that tree or do you know that route or which route did you take? I, I don't know that. Uh, I know there's a, um, basically a scree gully 
uh, where the aspens have been washed out by a rock slide. Oh. Um, and kind of stay right in that um, boulder field or, or scree gully. The rocks are pretty solid. Um, so go up that and then eventually there's an animal uh, trail that goes off to the right and you okay. stay on that, stay low along that. Stay low through the grassy area because that avoids the willows. Um, and then once you're on the other side of the willows in that basin that uh, Belfort and Oxford make, um, then you start going up on the right side. And then it's trying not to go too high to the right or too high to the left. So trying to stay more um, basin proper. Got it. Got it. Okay. So Oxford to Belford, pretty standard, I'm guessing. It was uh, 30, 32 minutes across. So yeah, it was nice. Nice, nice little uh, foray across. Um, not, are you running not, at this point or are you just hiking fast? Uh, jogging the downhills. Nice. Uh, Walking the uphills. Yep. Uh, you know, there's there's a cute like group of twenty people on top of Oxford. Uh, I, Nick Nick pointed it out to me later on, but a couple of them had helmets on. I didn't even notice, uh, but I thought that, that was really sweet. Um, and they were they were cheering me on, so that was that was cute. <laughs> um, and then Bel Belford was pretty pretty quick to get to. Uh, and then as Nick and I were working our way over to Missouri, we had a, a grapple storm, and so. Um, had grapple, I'd say half, half the time on our way up Missouri, mm. an hour and 40 minutes to get up Missouri. So like a 50 minute storm. Okay. Did you take the Ridge up Missouri? Yeah, we took the, the East Ridge of Missouri. Really? Um, okay. Which is something that Andrew, uh, told me by mouth, you know, you're looking for the, the orange gully, go across that, uh, go up to the left, uh, and you, there's like a, a flat spot to the left, get on that. And then you go to the right and then it's uh, basically kind of a little knife's edge that you, you go up and then about 30 feet up. Uh, there's two gullies, you can go right or left. And then uh, once you do that, there's uh, just a different colored gully with choss in it. Don't go up that, go across it. Uh, when, when you go across it, then there's a black solid gully um, that's low class five for maybe five, six moves. And then and you're out. Okay. I have to get out there and perfect that. Uh, I found it easier to go down that way. And I've only really tried to go up that way once or twice. And I got to get out there and perfect that before I take another crack at this thing, but I'll go anytime with you. Uh, nice. I love it. So. Nice. Yeah. It seems like a, a sporty route. It seems fun out there. <laughs> okay. Only, uh, like really uncomfortable spots. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Um, Missouri, and then it's down to Cloacy Lake, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So um, off, off there, you just kind of bomb down the, the scree, um, you know, towards Iowa a little bit. Um, and that goes straight to Cloacy Lake. You just re, you can reconnect with the, um, the trail that goes down to Cloacy Lake, mm -hmm. uh, again, by staying high. So you go to the right. Um, stay above the willows and then catch the, the trail, re-catch okay. the trail. Yep. Yep. Did you have crew down there by chance or they didn't want to brave the road or? <laughs> uh, no, no. I mean, I, I had Nick with me, so. Sure. Uh, you know, it's a pretty huge boost to, to begin with to, to have someone there with you. So oh, totally. We, we didn't really, we didn't really need crew. We, we got to the lake. Um, uh, I think I ate a Twinkie, um, and maybe drink a Coke. Uh, and we, we kind of chilled there. There's a, I've camped there a bunch of times. And so mm. just a couple spots I really like. So we, we hung out at one of those spots Nice. Uh, and we, we set a five minute alarm. So we got a little comfortable, but not too comfortable. And then we started going up here on. Oh, so you got a little nap there too. Uh, well, we, we laid on our butts for five minutes. Um, sure. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I didn't want to get too comfortable, so so yeah. I had a five minute time. Okay, um, Huron, what's that like this year? Going up that direction, um, every year it seems to be just slightly different with the snow avalanches, and some years there's cairns out there, some years there's not. What did it look like this year? Yeah, there, there's still cairns out there, okay. um, which is is somewhat sad. I feel like. Uh, we, we don't need those up there, but uh, 
it, it definitely is different every year. You know, sometimes you have a, a pretty nice trail right up the middle of that gulch. Um, once you get high enough, once you're out of the, the rock field uh, and, and you actually have, um, you know, little pebbles and dirt, there's, there's actually sometimes a trail that, that wasn't like that this year. It was still full of snow. Uh, so we uh, had to uh, do some tennis shoes and snow action, which wasn't bad. The snow was still firm enough when we got there. Um, uh, Nick is a much stronger hiker. Uh, so it was fun watching him just bomb up that thing. Um, it took me probably 15, 20 minutes longer to get to the top. Uh. And it was raining and, and snowing, um, which was was a nice change, I guess, from the grout. For sure. At least we knew we weren't going to get an electrical storm. <laughs> uh, and so when I finally crested over uh, that basin and, and got to the saddle, which at that point you connect with the, the main standard uh, here on trail, uh, it was pretty windy, rainy, snowy. Nick was like, we're just going up there quick. Uh, so we dropped our packs and just went up uh, packless the remaining 400 feet or 500 feet. Yep. Nice little high five and turn right back around. Turn right back around. And then you got a nice cushy trail to run down, I'm guessing. I'm, and I'm guessing yep. you were running most of that, trying to yeah. keep a good time. We, yeah, we ran that, which is nice yep. and cruiser. So. Cool, cool. And then the last three peaks, like I feel they're big peaks, man. I feel like, you know, going up La Plata takes a long time. And then Matt, you know, Albert and Massive, they're just big, big peaks. And, you know, they're the last three peaks. You've got to be tired at this point. Um, what's going through your mind? How are you, how are you doing mentally? Yeah. Um, I think you hit the nail on the head. They are, they're really big peaks. They're, you know, La Plata is 14, 300 something, 44, 40. Uh, and then, and then of course you got Albert and then massive. So you got the next two biggest ones. And, um, there's so, I don't really think about elevation in Colorado. They're all kind of the same. Um, but because they're so much bigger, they're just a lot longer horizontally. Right. That's something that I think people take for granted when you're trying to connect those three peaks, they just take a lot more time because of the horizontal distance that you're traveling. Yeah. In terms of uh, um, mileage, it's like more mileage throughout those peaks. Totally. Uh, you know, going from South Winfield all the way to uh, South La Plata Trail out is, I don't know, seven miles, something like that. And yeah. that's just a flat traverse than, than you're doing typically from peak to peak. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of how I was feeling, this time I felt a lot stronger. In, in 2020, um, I was probably pretty loopy and probably pushed it a little too early and should have taken a longer break before I went for it. Um, this time I felt like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get this. I, I feel like I, I definitely have this for sure. Um, and in 2020, I, I hallucinated. I was seeing foxes up there, uh, which they, they weren't there. <laughs> Erickson can attest. He was with me laughing at me. Uh, <laughs> This time I uh, had a guest book and was wondering why my guests weren't showing up. So Nick uh, was laughing at me because uh, I just was not making any sense. A guest book. Okay. Uh, yeah. You got to explain this. Uh, I, honestly, the brain was not working correctly. <laughs> um, so it made no sense. Uh, the, the funniest thing about it, though, is, is that uh, Andrew and Andrea surprised me uh, coming up La Plata. So as I was coming down, I did have some guests apparently <laughs> but we all chuckled about that <laughs> they, they ran down with, with nick and i uh, nice. so ran down to the standard la plata trailhead yep. and then i i took a 22 minute nap in the car okay um was having some some asthma issues and, and coughing up a lot of, of Phlegm and mucus. Phlegm. Yep. Okay. Are you using an inhaler or anything like that out there? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Inhaler. I'll be okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, it, it, it just seems to happen to me at, at some point. I just get these, these lung, um, issues, you know, one day is fine, two days fine, but at a certain point it just gets a little overwhelming. I think for my system mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. 
Okay, so a little nap at the La Plata Trailhead, and that's where you switch pacers as well, right? So that's got to be uh, a mental boost to have, uh, you know, somebody new to egg you on, new conversations. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately uh, for Erickson, Erickson was all excited, and I, I was all dejected because I thought maybe my lungs weren't going to let me finish. Oh. So he was all talkative, and, and I was a bit in, the, in a bit of a, a pain cave, so... At one point, I just said, can you please just remind me to breathe? Uh, <laughs> well, if you weren't in a pain cave at that point, I think that there would probably be a problem. I mean, that's you're 12 peaks in and you've got the biggest peaks ahead of you, man. And uh, still another, what, 20 miles, I think, for those last two peaks. Yeah, I think it is 20 or 20, 22, something like that. Um, and actually, I should back up as we're going down Colorado 82. Uh, Andrew was asking what my plan was to get off Albert and my plan was, well, if it's still dark out or, uh, if I'm not feeling strong, I'm just going to go down the, the standard North trail and then hit the Colorado trail and take the 110 road. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gone West, uh, through some, some scree gullies and really lost juice. That that's actually what happened in 2020. I just got too tired from going down scree. And Andrew said, well, there's this West Ridge Spur. You should try that. Um, so he just suggested it and showed it on his phone. I looked at it and I said, okay, I'll try that. <laughs> so that's how Erickson and I went down. Um, and in you've front never of like, been that way before? Never, never been that way. Oh, uh, that's, some, that's gutsy, dude. Worked out pretty good, luckily. Nice. Uh, okay. As we were doing it, uh, it was pretty funny when we – you know, you get on top and you're like, all right, well, it's not that. So it's got to be this thing to the left here that goes down that way. All right. Uh, we just kind of drop off the side, but there's like five people there. And Erickson and I were just giggling about what they must have been thinking when they watched us just walk literally off the side of the mountain. <laughs> um, okay. And you're still feeling confident at this point. I mean. Uh, when I got to the top of Elbert, I felt better. I, I started to breathe again. Okay. Um, and so I could like get more air in. Um, and Erickson is a very smart guy. So he told me to put a coat on and I put on my like uh, winter gloves that I wear. Uh, Cause we kind of knew we were going to be taking a bunch of tumbles uh, down the side of Albert mm. and um, true to form. He, he was right. And it was nice to have the, the big puffy clothing on because okay. we were pushing the, the envelope in terms of speed going down that stuff. Yep. Yep. Okay. And once we get the grass, take all that stuff off and, uh, you know, getting on top of Elbra, I was probably, um, an hour ahead of my time in 2020. So I felt yeah. like definitely going to make it. And then my body felt a lot better. So. Okay. Good. Um, okay. Down Albert up massive, just, uh, up the trail. Um, any special routes or anything crazy up massive? No, nothing crazy. Um, you know, there's a funny thing. Erickson lost his phone going down Albert. Uh, and actually after we celebrated, he went back and got it. Um, <laughs> it's impressive. Okay. Uh, you should have sent them out to look for your phone too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he found it like an hour before sunset. So okay. he had quite the day cause he did like 20 miles with me, uh, and was up all night and then celebrated and then drove back to, Albert and hiked back up to like 12,000 feet to go find his phone. Nice. Yeah. I had a buddy that actually lost his phone coming down Princeton and that ruined his whole attempt. He just gave up at, he, he spent like probably a couple hours looking for the phone and he's just like, forget That's it. Like I'm done. <laughs> That's devastating. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, well you pressed on man. Way to go. <laughs> Yeah, and I kept posting too. Jen actually, uh, on top of Columbia, didn't even hesitate. She gave me her phone. Uh, I couldn't figure out how to get into my Instagram. I apparently don't know my own password, uh, so I just her Instagram, uh, which was which was fun to post as Jen. But <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, okay. And then up massive, did you have friends on the summit? Did you, I don't know, pop a bottle of champagne or what, what did it look like? Uh, you know, um, at where 110J meets 110, um, 
so where the Iron Mike Road meets the the main Half Moon or North Half Moon Road, uh, Eric Tishner and Jen Nanny were there. Jen went looking for me, so I never saw her, uh, but but she was there in spirit. Uh, and I, I switched shoes there, uh, so put on uh, my I think my fourth pair of shoes. Um, so I go through shoes pretty quick. Um, fourth pair of shoes. Uh, had a had a coffee from Eric, which was fantastic. Nice. Uh, and then I I knew it was going to be close. I think I had um, five hours and forty one minutes to get up massive and down, which is ten miles. Um, and knew that was going to be a big big push. Mm. Um, so I grabbed a, a six hundred milliliter water bottle uh, and a goo and went no pack t shirt shorts got really burnt, uh, was the, was the compromise. Cause I didn't have any of the stuff I usually would have to take care of myself. Okay. Uh, hyper ba- basically hyperventilated the whole way up it. So it was just uh, full on mouth breathing, um, <laughs> as, as fast as possible, uh, with Erickson standing behind me, uh, saying what miles per hour I was going, we're pretty, <laughs> pretty in tune with each other. Um, and so he, he knew that's what I wanted at that point. Um, so I'm just doing math in my head the whole time, um, oh, making sure. Gonna... So you're feeling yeah. some pressure. It's definitely feeling the pressure. Yeah. Uh, and, and comical because I, I don't like to, to hike to the point that I'm panting, um, <laughs> but knew I had to, uh, summited, um, <laughs> I think with two hours and 40 minutes left. Nice. Um, I think it was two hours and nine minutes I got down. So like two hours and 39 minutes left. Okay. Uh, knew I was going to finish uh, as long as I didn't like make a huge route finding error or, or hurt myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, no real celebration just because I, for me, uh, finishing it meant being at Fish Hatchery within 60 oh, yeah. hours. Hell yeah. Um, you know, it was more of a, all right, we did it. Now let's keep going. Cool. Uh, mentality. So we were, we were maybe on, Nick wanted to take a portrait mode photo and uh, I gave him three seconds and, and he didn't get there. So I just said, I'm going, sorry. <laughs> um, and then I, there were times where I was crying and I was like, well, how ridiculous would that be if, if you uh, fell because you're crying and then because you fell, you like broke your ankle and you didn't finish. So perhaps you should stop that. Um, <laughs> crying tears of happy joy, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Or just like tired emotion or. I'm a pretty emotional guy. Um, I, I cried on top of Antero too. Um, and so uh, I, I've always been that way. The first time I did run rabbit uh, and I got to the top of Mount Warner on the way back. I knew I only had four miles left. I knew I was going to finish my first hundred. So I was crying that whole time. Uh, Silver Heels cried the, the last, I don't know, probably 10 miles. And I'm just a, I'm a crier. Uh, <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. No, no, absolutely not. Um, and so uh, I definitely, definitely cried a lot uh, on the way down Massive. Uh, tried to give Erickson a hug. He's, he's all business. He just pushed me. Uh, told me to keep going, which is <laughs> cool. It's, and a very good pace. Ch- it's a good pacer right there. Yeah, he's a, he's a Viking. He's got Vi- true Viking blood in him. So he's got <laughs> blonde hair and he's like 6'2". Just brilliant athlete um but uh awesome. yeah you know he's just calling out numbers uh 3.7 4.1 5.2 for miles per hour um it's seven miles down from the top of massive to fish hatchery so uh with the amount of time we had i just wanted to keep it close to four miles an hour um and then once we were within a mile i kind of slowed down and took it all in okay okay what does that mean? Uh, took it all in, uh, more emotion. Uh, what was that last mile? Like, uh, just trying to like really see everything. Um, you know, I think a lot of times when you're going that far, uh, you're trying to minimize your feelings and trying to minimize the, the experiences not take as much in. Um, and so, you know, even giggling about fish hatchery signs, uh, you know, those didn't used to be up there. It didn't used to say right or left for fish hatchery. Uh, so that, that's hilarious to me that, that you get that added benefit, you know, particularly when you know that Andrew missed it by like 14 minutes, uh, cause he got lost in those trees one time. <laughs> um, 
but uh, you know, the, the blue blazes, um, the trees, the birds, uh, I joke around a lot that I'm getting old because I love the birds. Um, I really like the, the early hours out there and even the, the after storm hours, uh, you know, six, seven, eight, nine o'clock. I love being out in the mountains and just listening to birds. Um, and so whenever I hear them, I really like to just soak it in. Um, and so I think I was pretty hyper vigilant in terms of what I was experiencing that, that last mile. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the senses are all heightened at that point. Um, yeah. Emotions are just a little bit wilder than normal. So yeah, I'm just trying to picture it and I can kind of understand, um, fish hatchery. Did you have a bunch of people waiting for you? Was there a big celebration? Um, I think I heard that Andrew and Andrea were there at the finish. What was that like? I, and I mean, just uh, the culmination of this whole thing, finally coming together six years, four attempts. I mean, um, were you just so exhausted that you couldn't quite process it or when you came down to fish hatchery, did it all hit you? What was it like? Uh, it was pretty neat. Um, I, I, I do have to back up Nick, Nick actually. So after pacing me for five peaks, he took like a nap and then he hiked back up to, to massive. So he surprised me on top of the day to answer oh, that question. Cool. Um, that's why he was there to, to try to do portrait mode with an impatient me. Okay. Uh, but, uh, so we get down. Um, so Nick and Erickson are with me. Uh, Jen's there. Jen's, uh, always been just a, a really good friend. Um, she helped. I'm a terrible, uh, organizer planner. Uh, so she really helped push me having like goals in terms of planning, organizing, uh, scheduling out stuff, making sure I had food, packing the food, uh, all the little things that I'm just terrible at. And that's what really made this, I think a successful attempt, um, is, is all the little things that Jen was able to do. Uh, so that we had a, we had a hug, uh, and a good moment together. And then um, uh, my friend Dan Rosboski was there. He and I trained together. So we did uh, a bunch of 414er days, a couple 514er days. He did a 714er day with me, and I did eight that day uh, in getting ready for this thing. He also tried Nolan's and got 11 peaks. So he had done 11 and um, then knee hurt. So he, he dropped out. And so it was pretty special uh getting to share that with him nice his girlfriend austin was there um which was really nice to see austin she she bailed us out on a, on a 414 or day where we uh, just didn't make it to our next car we had set up a shuttle but didn't didn't get there uh so all all that sort of help that that goes into these sorts of preps uh is really hard to fathom but we got a ton of help along the way um in terms of people going out of their way to make it possible for us. Um, Eric Tishner was there. It's good getting a hug from him. Um, he was wearing one of, of Jen shirts. Jen made a bunch of shirts. Uh, so that made me giggle. Um, one of my friends from uh, the professional world, who's a, uh, a now a distance runner. He ran level 100 last year. Michael Sager was there with his girlfriend. He brought a bottle of Prosecco. Um, which I hadn't drank for 60 days. Uh, so I had a sip and that was enough to really uh, get me uh, um, uh, out of my normal mentation, we'll say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andrew and Andrew were there. Um, uh, Alyssa Boa and, uh, and her, her boyfriend, uh, Davison, were there. Um, they, they brought me tiramisu, which was so good. I call them the super couple. Uh, and I joke that I can learn a lot from them and, and frankly, shouldn't be joking, could learn a lot from them in terms of, of relationships. They just have this beautiful relationship that I love watching. So mm. uh, it was really sweet of them to come visit. Uh, there was a, a gentleman named Matt Randall who was just kind of there. Uh, so that was, that was neat to meet him. Um, and it was fun just kind of like, talking and bouncing off stories with, with all, all these different folks. Um, uh, a nice kid named Alec was, was there too. Uh, and so I had a good time um, between being really exhausted and then comically being a ham about the whole thing. Uh, I'm not usually a huge fan of being the center of attention, um, but it was, it was fun to, to goofball in it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. 
how much time did you spend there before it was time to, I don't know, pass out or go get food or whatever was first? <laughs> well, well, I had the, the Teramisu right there, which was, was pretty clutch. Um, okay. uh, you know, I, I did a shirt change and then, uh, uh, well, <laughs> Jen had, had made a sign that said, Holy shit, you did it. And uh, put it <laughs> on Nick's car. Uh, and then they put a, a chair out there for me. So I, I definitely basked in it a little bit. I'd say probably about 40 minutes, you know, it was like 20 minutes of just like I sat there and talked to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was just like really special. And then 20 more minutes of uh, like goofball pictures and eating tiramisu. Nice. And then what was it? Sleep? dessert like did you celebrate i'm just curious what people do like almost right afterwards uh i probably don't do it the right way i, I can say that much um so <laughs> we we went to a mexican restaurant okay uh, i ordered cheese quesadilla and um it tasted like cardboard to me <laughs> uh, so that wasn't terribly satisfying uh so jen and eric and i had had mexican um, and then we went back, uh, to an Airbnb and I think I lasted maybe 10 minutes before I was falling asleep, sitting up mm. and then, uh, put my, put myself to bed and 14 hours later, I woke up. Nice. Okay, man. 5.45 and woke up at 7. Wow. 7.45. Okay. And you wake up at 7.45. What's the first thing that comes into your head? Must make coffee. Coffee. Okay. <laughs> was your body pretty right. wrecked or were you able to walk around or how, how were you feeling? Yeah. Um, muscles good. Um, had a little groggy, uh, skin on my feet is usually one of my bigger, uh, Achilles heels, so to speak. Um, and so, uh, both my pinky toes didn't have a lot of skin left, uh, but everything else was pretty intact. And then my feet were just really swollen. Mm. So Legging it on the outsides, trying not to like uh, pick the outside. It was kind of a weird block. Yep. Uh, but once I got to the kitchen, I just sat down and there's a Keurig there that was really confusing. It, it said cups or ounces. And I picked cups, or I think, which was apparently to go to the big uh, giant like vat uh, for like a typical drip coffee. And I just had wanted a cup. And a cup meant to put it in a cup. Yeah. Totally wrong. So I had to wait like 28 minutes for this thing to brew 12 cups of coffee. Oh. It, uh, just kind of laughing at myself like that. That would happen. That's pretty hilarious. Devastating. Uh, it, was, it was pretty devastating. It was like 28 minutes of, of terror. <laughs> I was like everyone up. Um, and then eventually got to make my little one cup Keurig. <laughs> popped out right at that time and we had coffee together. It was really pleasant cool really cool man well congratulations i mean it's it's a long journey to finally get this thing done you've got to feel pretty pretty decent about yourself i mean uh you seem like a humble dude but i mean it's gotta feel some it's gotta feel pretty good to check this thing off yeah yeah it, it feels really good um you know it's it's a it was definitely a monkey off the back uh for me um and a weight a weight off my back. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't, I, I don't think I would have finished without my friend's help. I really, I really do think Jen and Nick and Eric and, and Erickson and, um, and Chris like made the difference. Even, even Chris Tomer, um, gave me some weather updates that caused me to actually go a day earlier. I was going to start on a Friday, but I started on a Thursday because of the weather up Chris. Uh, I don't think I would have finished that either because Sunday morning when I woke up, uh, both massive and Albert were socked in from Leadville. Ooh, okay. Um, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't happen if I started Friday. Um, yeah. but, um, yeah, it, it, it's, for me, it's a, it's just a group, group achievement. Um, but pretty, um, pretty grateful for, for everyone's help, um, making it happen. I, I'm a pretty, I, I say I'm a pretty average athlete. And, and so I think really the, the scouting and the, the help from my friends, I think got me over the, over the hump, uh, barely. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, I guess we, I don't think we mentioned you finished with a half an hour time to kill. You finished in 59 hours, 29 minutes. And for this thing to quote unquote count, it has to be done in under 60 hours. So, I mean, uh, you had a little bit of time to kill too. So c- congrats there as well. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely didn't feel like time to kill. Him all <laughs> I bet. I bet. Um, real quick, like, did you have, like, let's talk gear. Like what were you using or was there anything that was just really clutch that you couldn't have gone without? And I, I guess I'm always curious, were you listening to music or audio books or anything out there or no headphones or what, what was your experience? Uh, no headphones. Okay. Uh, it, you know, gear wise, I had uh, this Patagonia hat that's been with me for a long time now. Um, had Oakley sunglasses, uh, which younger me would always just wear gas station glasses, but it was pretty helpful to keep the the sun out. Usually I just have like really bad bloodshot eyes by the end of something like this, but this time I didn't have any of those problems. So it's okay. funny uh, when you have nice, nice uh, glasses, apparently it helps. Uh, <laughs> simple t-shirts, uh, short shorts, just because I'm a goofball. Um, a pair of uh, rain pants for the rains um, from Arterix. Uh, and then three three pairs of Hocus Bee Goats and one pair of Norda RZ something or other, I can't remember. Uh, but they're also a Vibram sole shoe, uh, pretty similar to a Hoka, kind of a next generation Hoka. So the speed go, I've never been able to wear the Hoka's out there on that sort of terrain because it's, the platform's a little too high and I'm kind of prone to rolling my ankle. And then if I do it, you roll it extra far with the Hoka's, you don't yep. have that problem? Uh, I've rolled my ankles a lot. Um, and so when I do roll them, they, they come back pretty quick. Like it's okay. like 10 minutes of peg leg and then suddenly I have some pretty good range of motion again. Okay. I attribute just to being mostly very broken. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but I get at that high stack, I can be uh, problematic for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it worked for you because I'm sure that that's helpful. Just having that extra cush out there. Yeah. It, pros and cons, right? You, you, you energy loss. So there's a little extra effort. Uh, you know, I wear all sorts of shoes. So I, I even wear ultras and, um, I have a pretty good sense of what my perceived rate of effort is given each shoe. Um, so that there's a little extra effort in the Hoka, but the body is, is I think a little bit more protected wearing them. So okay. quickly, I think because of that. Got it. All right, man. Well, and lastly, I like, I know you just finished this thing and we're trying to stay present and everything, but I've got to ask like, what's next? Do you have any plans in the works or any thoughts, any projects on your mind? What are you thinking? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to do high five 100 next ah, sweet. Month, August 12. Um, you know, I, I kind of like things that not a lot of people have done. Yep. Um, and, and so that's definitely one that the, the finishers list is, is short. Uh, Let me so, ask you this. How did you get into that without Nolan's being on your resume? Uh, just a, applied and, and got in. Okay. I thought you, I thought that um, uh, folks had to have sort of a stout resume to get into this thing or not really. Yeah. My, uh, my application said I like mountains exclamation point. Oh, perfect. Okay. Right on. <laughs> well, that um, sounds like a cool race and that's in what a month yeah august 12th okay so, you feel like you're going to be recovered and good to go by then uh, training started yesterday so yeah nice i think i'll i think i'll be there by by that time but i'm not gonna say i'll be 100 percent ready but um definitely see how the body comes in the next few weeks and, and then go from there okay. and then probably do uh, rim to rim to rim um i've done it before i really like it yeah that's probably Probably a fall activity though. Yep. But, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's perfect for the fall. I've done it a couple times, and both times were actually on Thanksgiving weekend, I believe. So, um, yeah, that's that's perfect, man. What was that? Was it? Was it? Uh, how warm was it? I'm curious about this. Oh, it's still warm down there, but I think like half of the water spigots were still turned on. So I had there was enough water supply down there. 
it was hot, but not blazing. You know, it's like you start out with a jacket in the morning, you take the jacket off, it's shorts and short sleeve for almost the entire day. Um, one time there was a huge inversion while I was down there. So it was really overcast on the bottom. And then as you came up to the top, you got up above the clouds and you couldn't even really see down in the canyon. That was pretty wild. Incredible. But honestly, it's probably the perfect time to do it. It's like perfect weather. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I did it in October and it was a little overwhelmingly warm down there during the day. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanksgiving weekend. That's the time to do it. <laughs> Cool, man. Well, I just want to say thanks for sharing all your secrets. Um, you know, you can, I feel like people can give their secrets with Nolan's because it's not really going to help anybody. It's like, you still have to go out there and train your ass off, put the time in, scout the thing. It's going to take you a lot of time for anyone to put this together, but I always appreciate hearing all the little details that people put into this thing. So, um, thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I mean, this is a, that's, I've learned a lot from, from word of mouth, from, you know, from Andrew uh, in terms of mountains, from, from Hannes in terms of, of ultra efforts and stuff like that. So uh, I'm always happy to share any, anything I know. And I think that's one of the beauties of, of these sorts of activities. Yeah. Uh, people are willing to, willing to share what they know. Yeah. A hundred percent. And it doesn't sound like you live too far from me, man. So we'll have to get out for a hike sometime. I mean, if you're headed out to Buena Vista, Leadville, I mean, it seems like I'm out there dang near almost every weekend. So give a sure. shout and we'll have to hit something up at some point. It'd be great. Yeah, I love that. Cool. Love that. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate this. I enjoyed every second of it. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks. Appreciate you. Have a great night, dude. Likewise. You too. Take care. All right. See ya.